This tutorial will show you how to transfer text from a text box to a label and to play a little bit with some of the different properties that we have available within a program. So to begin, what I need to do is I need to go to Start and I will go to All Programs and again I'll go to Microsoft Visual Studio and I see here that here is the link for the Microsoft Visual Studio program. Now it's kind of annoying that I don't have a shortcut on my desktop, and I really like to have a shortcut on my desktop for uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. So what I'm going to do is I will right click on this link to the program that I have right here. So I'm going to click on the right mouse button and I will go down to Send To and I'll click my left mouse button guess I didn't need to and I will say Send To the Desktop so I'll left click here and as you can see that just created a link now so that I'll just be able to go to this link that I have on my desktop to uh, run Microsoft Visual Studio now let's go ahead and begin Microsoft Visual Studio. And again, the first thing I need to do is go to File. We're going to create a new project. So I go to Project. Um, I want to make sure I have Visual Basic. Windows Form application selected. I need to browse to my Chapter 1 folder, which is under my name, and I'll say OK. And then I need to rename the project. Since I'm transferring text, I'll just call this the Transfer Text Program. I ran the two words together, capitalizing the beginning of each word, which makes it a little easier to read. Uh, some people also like putting an underscore between the two words. This is acceptable, too. But I'll just capitalize the beginning of the first two words. That will become the name of my new project. So after I make sure I've got a Visual Basic Windows Form application, its name is Transfer Text, and it's in the right place, I'm going to click OK. Now, again, I will need a button on my form. Just for fun, I'm going to double click on the button. And you can see it puts a button here. I can move the button to wherever I want. So I'll move it down a little bit. I would like to have a text box on here. So I'll double click on text box. Move it over here to the right. And then I also need a label again. And I move this down to here. So this is going to be my basic setup for the program that I'm going to be working with. So one thing I'm going to do a little different in this program that I didn't do in my very first program is I'm going to play around a little bit with the properties. Now, the way the Properties window works here is that for each one of these tools I have here, it has its own Properties window. For instance, if I click on the button, I can go to the Properties window after I've highlighted button. I'm working now with the properties of that button, and I can change anything I want. For instance, if what that button is going to do is transfer text, I can just change the text to read transfer text. And when you hit return, watch what happens to the text on the button right here. So I'm going to hit return, and you'll notice that it now says transfer. You can't see it all. You might have to stretch the button just a little bit to read everything. Uh, could have also made the button longer, would work that way, but I think honestly it looks a little bit better if we just make it um, both wider 
and uh, um, a little bit longer. Now, I don't want to have anything in my text box, but labels, labels are kind of funny because usually you don't want to have any text in them, but if I delete all the text that's there, because it has no edge, it's just going to vanish. So a lot of times when I work with a label, I like to give an edge to it so I can see it. And if I click on the label, you'll notice now I'm changing the property of the label. I can go all the way up in my properties window and I can go to border style. And I am going to set the border style to fixed 3D. And you'll notice now that gives the label a little bit of an edge so I can see it. I won't lose it. The other thing I don't like about labels is that uh, it automatically sets the size of the label, Visual Basic does, to whatever text you have written in there. And I don't really like that. I'd like to be able to set the size myself. So right here on the property of auto size for the label, I'm going to set it from true to false. Now Visual Basic will not auto size the label for me. So I think that's a little bit better deal. Now after I've done that, I can now go down and change the text. It's always a good idea to shut off auto size first before you change the text. Otherwise you might actually lose your label. It might make it very hard to find. So I'm going to now delete the text and the label and hit return and you'll notice now the text is gone. Now another thing I can do while I'm changing what it says on my tools is I can also change what it says on my form. It doesn't look real professional having my program say form one. What I want to do is I wanted to uh, say that basically this is my first program or at least one of my first. So I'm just going to change the text on the form to say, and notice you've got to click on the form. Make sure you don't click on the tools. It's got to be someplace other than the tools. Make sure it says Form 1, and now I can write something like Jim Crumb's first program. And hit Return, and you'll notice now it says that at the top of my form. Now, the next thing I think I'll do is I'll actually get my program so that whatever I type in this text box is sent to my label. Now, buttons, the button tool is usually used to take action. So this is something you click to make something happen. The text box is usually used to take text from the user. The label is usually used to display text, but not to take it. So these are three of the most common tools that we'll use for most of our programs in the entire course. So let's go write the code, and to write the code, we know that it's the button that's going to take the action, so let's double click on the button. It takes us to the code window, so now we need to think. What is the text that's going to be changed? Whatever gets the action is written first. So it turns out it's going to be the label. And we know that by convention within Visual Basic, if I only have but one label, that label's name is going to be label1. Dot. This is going to allow me to change whatever property it is I want to change, but again, it is the text I wish to change in the label. Now, I need to get the text from somewhere, and where am I going to get this from? Well, it turns out it is going to be the text box. So I am going to get the text from the text box. So I will write text box 1. That's the name of the text box. And what property am I taking from text box 1 and transferring to the label? Well, again, it would be the text. If you think about it, this is very logical. Again, what gets the action is to the left. Where it is gotten from is on the right. And this is the convention you must always follow. I'll go ahead and hit return. You'll notice these were both properties we changed just a little while ago in the properties window. But not only can we change them in the properties window, we can change them on the fly when our program runs. At this particular point, I'm going to go back to my form design window so I can look at my form. 
Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild my program. And I'm going to go to debug and I'll run my program. Now, I'm just going to write something here. Um, I'll say, I love Fridays. When I click on transfer text, you'll see my program works and the text was sent down to here. Now, one thing you want to make sure you did, if you didn't do it, if something went wrong with your program, make sure that your text box and your label are long enough to display all the text. If it's not quite long enough, you may not see any text displayed at all. So at any rate, you can see that the program works right now. And again, I can't change this program at all until I stop the running program. So I'll stop it by clicking on Close here. There's a couple other things I want to do here. I want to have a little fun. Um, I'm going to make the background of my form um, a color, just make it kind of interesting. And I will uh, make it say uh, yellow. So if I want to change the background of my form, I click on the background of my form, I go to back color, and I can choose any of these colors here. The web and the system colors are often not too interesting, but the custom colors are kind of neat. And for instance, if I wanted to make the background color of my form yellow, I could just select yellow. Again, I did that by going to custom, selecting yellow, and this is what it left me with. I'm not real happy with the color yellow, a yellow button on a yellow form. So I can go to the back color of just the button, just as I did for the form, and I can give it um, just the typical button face color if I want. Uh, the label, if I wish, I can also change its back color to whatever I want. Um, I could make it goldenrod if I wanted to. That's a little hard to read. I could make it, if I wished, sky blue. That looks a little bit better. So at any rate, I can go ahead now and rebuild my program. And I can run it. And I can test it. I'll just say hi there. And you can see that it works. Now, an interesting thing about my program is that the code was written for this program and saved when I successfully rebuilt the solution. I never really had to go to file and save it. It was just saved the way I wanted. Now, I can see this uh, if I want to by closing my program down. Since this program has been saved, I don't need to worry about saving it, so I'll just exit out of here. And just for fun, I'll go to Run. I'll type in the word Explorer. And I'm going to go to my folder where I keep my files on my computer. And you'll notice Visual Basic is not running right now. And here is my transfer text program. So I'll go into transfer text. And I'll go into, you'll notice I've already got one transfer text folder here, but I have one within it. And that'll always be the case for all the programs you make. You'll have the same name as your project and as a folder within your workspace folder. I'll then go to the bin directory. I'll then go into the bug. Wow, there's a lot of folders there. Look at all these folders I've got getting to the debug folder. What I wanted to show you was this executable file that's been created here. And this is one that I can actually run on my computer. If I double click on it, look at that. Here's our program again without even Visual Basic running. I have made this program. It's something that Actually, I can use. I can get it to do different things. So uh, you can even test it if you'd like. Again, I'll type hi there. And you can see that it works. Now, 
As I said before, you'll notice that uh, Visual Basic is really not running. So there's something else kind of handy, knowing something about Explorer, the program Explorer, and about a Visual Basic uh, program. And that is that um, every time we create a project, there is an SLN file, which is created. And this is called the solution file. So if I'm in Explorer and I want to see what this program is about, I can just double click on the SLN file and it will open up my entire project into Microsoft Visual Studio and I'm right back where I was before. So again, what I did was I went to the SLN file in the project that I just created and it opened up my entire workspace. Now you can only open up the same workspace once. If I tried to open it up again, have two of these running at the same time, it would not work for the same program. Though I can have several workspaces running at the same time if it's not the same program, and I'll show you some examples of that later. At this particular point, this concludes the tutorial.